I see some new faces, some people I've never met before. Damn. Okay, I'll give it a couple of minutes. Uh, Marcus, I, I recognize Marcus. I remember you, I remember you. What's Welcome up, camp. how's it going? Good, good, good. How are things, bro? Yeah, it's good. I bought my first meeting today through cold calling. Nice. I'm good pretty job. gassed about that. Cool, cool, cool. Well, when is the meeting? Yeah. Uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday? Cool. I'm like low-key shit in my pants now. Mm -hmm. No, you'll be fine. That's good. Yeah, no, meetings are simple. You're just having the conversation, explain the product, ask questions, you know, get to know the prospect. Over mm -hmm. time, the more you do it, the less it becomes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I, I think the biggest mistake that I see people doing with their first calls is they make it more of like an interrogation. You know, you ask them like twenty different questions, and it's there's not really like a back and forth sort of a conversation. Mm -hmm. that's happening. It's just like question, 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 and yeah, and then they make them sit through twenty minutes of powerpoints and stuff like that. So, anyways. Cool. All right. How's everyone? Cameron, the goat. The goat is in the house. The hey, goat. Buddy, bro. Going, bro? It's going good. Um, just setting a campaign for the for the new client we just signed. But yeah. so it's, it's going good. How's everything over there? It's good, good, good. I'm busy. Uh, I've been really busy this uh Yeah, I mean you're you're time. starting to grow your hair back, you know. You, you had a little ball. Uh, yeah. I used to uh <laughs> It's less stressful, you know. Now that I don't coach you guys every day, it's uh, I can actually sleep. And... <laughs> He's like, I'm <laughs> meditating shit now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah man. Okay. So we're moving everything over to like Google Ads and shit because I'm working with roofers now, mm -hmm. and we just signed one for 4K, um, two, two, three days ago. Okay. So we're just working on that now. So hope all's good. Let's see what okay. happens. <laughs> and I heard also from Praveen that you're um you're gonna be testing out YouTube ads for mm -hmm. your clients. I'm not. That's for no. his shit. Like if um, he's the one that's gonna do that. Yeah, he wants to test it out. I'm just gonna be white label it. Yeah. I, I don't know but, how I feel about YouTube ads for like roofers. You know, I mean, like they work, right? If you have like work. content, like if they like record a video of them doing like before and after, and you can cut it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can work. But if they don't, if it's just like pictures or some bullshit that they have, it's not going to work. It has to be like engaging. Yeah. I don't know. My point of view on that is I feel like like YouTube is good for like coaches, you know, like people like me, like I should be doing probably YouTube ads, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the local, like, I don't know, it might work. It's, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know it's just testing. Test. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right, guys. Um, I don't really have anything planned for today's call. Um, I'll just take some of you guys' questions. You know, if you guys want to get my feedback on anything or just ask me anything, or I can review some of your landing page, VSLs, really anything. Um, I have about an hour, so until 1 p.m. my time. Um, so, yeah. Who wants to go first? I want to go first. All right, perfect. Nice to meet you. I don't think we've nice ever met Nice to meet before. you. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I joined a couple of days ago. Oh, cool. Where Where are you from? I'm from Bulgaria, but I live in Spain. Ah, cool, cool, cool. One of my uh, yeah. one of our team members is from Bulgaria as well. Who? Uh, it's, you don't know him. He's uh. What's he's his name? Of, his name is Daniel. Ah. Daniel Padov, something like that. Um, super nice guy. He's been with me for a very long time, for like almost a year now. And I know he's from Bulgaria, and he's uh, planning to move in. Uh, he wants to go in Europe somewhere, so I know he's. Uh, he also wants to do the move like you. Great, great. <laughs> cool, perfect. Okay, so I have a question um, regarding outreach method. So I'm in the uh, aesthetic medicine niche, and I I know that if I call um, some clinic. Uh, the one that is going to pick up the phone is uh, the receptionist. Yeah. So I don't know if this is the best uh, outreach method for me. What do you think about that? Yeah. Anything that's like medical clinics and stuff like that. I'm not like a huge fan of cold calling because as you mentioned, most of the time you will end up to uh, speaking with receptionists and stuff like that. Um, are you calling in the States or are you sticking to Spain? So for the moment, I want to uh, do it in Spain only. Okay. Maybe if the market is different there, you can test it out. It's not going to hurt. You can do it for a week and just see what happens. Um, I always tell okay. people, I'm like, it's like you never, 
like you have to test okay every niche every country every location is very different um so test it out obviously it depends on the size of the company as well i'm assuming if you work with smaller businesses they might not have a receptionist so you might directly get in contact with the decision maker as well um uh, but test it out uh but for me like just i i like cold dms like that's my thing i've always done that it's been okay. working very, extremely well for me um so i would do a combo of both just test it out see whatever works best and whatever works best you go all in in that and you sort of test it out okay but for example uh when you mention dms when you talk about uh facebook or uh, instagram too and linkedin um i wouldn't do linkedin i would do both facebook and instagram Okay, but, perfect. But you, you really have to make sure that your accounts are like optimized. Okay. You cannot like uh, send DMs from an account with six followers with like two generic pictures. You know, it has to be a bit like it has to be like, you know, that video where I kind of broke down my socials, like how I go about doing it. Try yeah. to do the same thing. You should do um, and then when you, and yeah, when you DM from uh, from an account like that, your, your, your chances to convert are going to be a lot higher. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. What's the offer that you're pushing? Is it Facebook ads? Uh, yeah, Facebook ads and also appointment uh, setting. Okay, perfect. And are you working with a media buyer or are you doing this uh, by yourself? No, I'm going to do it by myself Okay. okay until perfect. I get uh, enough clients to okay. pay to a uh, person. Okay, perfect. Good. Yeah. If you do it in the Spanish market, I have a, a close friend of mine. He runs an agency with real estate agents. Uh, and he works in a, in Spain, well, like Spanish speaking countries. And I know he tells me that it's a lot easier to get them results. There's less competition, okay. less people doing it. You don't need as high of an ad spend. Um, it's just the only sort of downside is that as you scale, it's going to be harder to find people that can work with you. You know, it's okay. a lot easier to okay. find English speaking people, but um, there's also other countries. But yeah, you'll figure it out. It's not that bad. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, Marcus, give us a quick rundown of the client. I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, well, sorry. Give us a quick rundown of the your niche. What did you pitch the client and everything? Uh, so I've chosen landscape gardeners um, for a few reasons, mainly because it's one of the easiest ones to cold call. I want to get mm -hmm. really good at cold call. Um, what were the other questions? Sorry. Um, what did you uh, What did you pitch them on the cold call? Uh, Facebook ads, lead gen, um, pay on results. Okay. So nothing up front, completely performance. Completely performance based. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you get on a call, um, and you give them the pitch and everything, I want you to prepare sort of like a PowerPoint or something like ju just something to show them the price, uh, present them two options. Okay. One where it's 100% performance based, but there's like a condition to it. Okay, so either X amount of ad spend is required um, or we take X amount of revenue and make it almost so that it doesn't really make sense. Like it's kind of like a, let's say the profit margins are 20%, okay? And you tell them like, hey, mm. um, if you want to do completely performance-based, that's okay uh, because we are taking on a bigger risk. Uh, we do require more fee basically on the performance end. So we're going to take 15% of whatever we make you. So if your margins are 20 and you tell them, hey, I'll take 15 from the clients that I bring you, they're only left with 5%. So it doesn't really make sense. And then you tell them, or what I can do instead is we just go with a flat $1,000 fee. And with that, I guarantee you that I'll help you at least make your money back with our services. Which one do you prefer? Do you want to do this or this? Not do you want to work with us? Is I know you want to work with us, but do you want to use this offer or this offer? Mm. And the goal is always to cash collect up front. And you want to okay. push them toward the retainer, not performance. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. I recently started doing that with my uh, big offer, um, and that has been working extremely well for us. Like I, I tell people, I'm like, yeah, we do performance space and everything, and it does make sense. What I tell them is, I'm like, look, if you're a complete beginner, I'm not going to build you an entire acquisition system if you can only put five hundred bucks per month in ad spend. So for us, if you want me to work completely performance space and help your agency scale. You have to put at least 5K in ad spend and you have to be making at least, let's say, 50K per month with your agency. Mm. And they're like, well, I'm not at that point. I'm like, okay, well, that's okay then. In that case, I'm going to present you my second offer where I'm going to help you get to 50K per month and this is the upfront fee to do it. So it's like a, it's a bait and switch, but not really, but kind of. Yeah, it's nice, man. 
but I, I wouldn't um, do that. Okay. I have another quick one about cold calling in uh, the US. I haven't actually started yet, um, but would you recommend like changing my go high level number so it's different for like each state? Um, state, Cameron. What do you what, what do you think? I, I see you. Oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the unmute. I was like, okay, oh. <laughs> no, I've been trying to stay silent. Um, so you can either a buy a bunch of go high low numbers that will add up, or you can use that uh, thing called Kixi. It's a little bit more expensive, but each city you call or state, it changes the area code, so that answer. But it's a little bit more. It's like three hundred per user i think or some shit like that but you recommend definitely changing it based on state not just having one number for all yeah you do because they're not going to answer like if someone calls me from a like california number or some shit like that i'm not going to pick up yeah mm -hmm. so yeah, pick, i'll pick use kixi yeah, pick one number start with one state <laughs> and just cold call like crazy and just stick in that niche as long as you or in that state as yeah. long as you can and, and if they um it, if they ask you, you remember i live in cyprus but I'm mm -hmm. operating out of the UK. Mm -hmm. I uh, I had someone who was like really close to booking a meeting earlier, but then I said that I was in Cyprus, and he just instant like didn't want anything to do with me. So if, if somebody would to ask like where am I in the world, do I say that I'm local or so you travel a lot? Say so like we okay. work we work with clients all over the country that you use. So if you called in the States, we work with clients all over the States. Uh, currently mm -hmm. I'm traveling. Uh, I'm currently located in England and Cyprus or whatever. Uh, but uh, most of our, all of our clients are from the US. Yeah, that's right. Okay. It, it shouldn't cool. be, uh, like it, it shouldn't really matter to be honest. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah I okay. actually have a question for you, Oliver. Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. How you doing? Have we ever way? met? I know. Oh, no, well, nice, to, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Bro, we're and, growing too um, quickly. I, I I lose like I don't recognize <laughs> the faces anymore. It's bad. <laughs> no, you haven't seen me before. That's that's good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, so over. you're gonna see it now. We have so many more members. I think we had a growth of like twenty over the last couple of days or like a week or so. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's one of the newest members as well, but you're gonna see anyone who comes is never gonna be the same anymore. <laughs> it's good it's good perfect so yeah so um yeah so i recently closed a client on a commission base um 100 mm -hmm. commission base i think i texted you about that yeah. and then um so i'm gonna be start i have all the facebook ads ready f to run for them mm -hmm. and then my question is let's say they want to sp start spending 30 dollars a day i'm gonna mm -hmm. obviously um divide it between all four ads and then let's say the third or the fourth ad are not really doing good or let's say three out of the four ads are doing good. Should I pour all the money into the best ad or should I kind of keep um, like exiting the one that's doing the worst? Yeah. So at the beginning, you test multiple ad sets, multiple creatives, targeting, all those things. And once you find the winning formula, then you go all in on that. Or at least you put most of the money on that thing. Okay. Okay. So spend like most of the clients daily spend on the best ad that's performing the best. Of course, if one is outperforming everything else, you focus on that. Okay, and then rinse and repeat for like another ad set and then get that best ad and then continue the cycle, correct? Correct. Okay. Can I also add something? Yeah, yeah. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> you're going to do it from the campaign view, not like per ad set. Because mm -hmm. if you do it on the campaign view, it spreads it through the whole campaign. And whatever works, you can just turn that ad set off. Yeah. That's like the simple way. Instead of like you having to go in the ad, say, okay, $5 on this ad, $3 here, 33 cents on that. No, oh, yeah, no, the the ad on um, the campaign view is a lot easier. It's I've been using that when I used to run ads for myself. And um, it's much easier than going ahead and going through each ad. That's, yeah, no, the, the campaign ad is definitely, um, definitely the best option to go with mm -hmm. editing the whole campaign. Good. Definitely. Like I said last time, well, by text, like don't your next client don't don't sign them performance based only. You know, try to collect something up front so at least you can cover the fee of hiring someone that can take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. If you ask me how to run ads for my business for my clients, I don't. I know the <laughs> basics, but Cameron probably knows more than I do. But I have the best yeah. on my team. A very good yeah. media buyer. Very good people, and they get me amazing results. And for me, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to grow quickly, you have to just outsource and. 
don't worry about profit margins. Uh, someone who tells me I have 90% profit margins in my business, for me, that's not a flex. That just, you're telling me that you basically do everything in your business and you're a slave mm -hmm. to your company. I'd much rather make 50% of half a million per month than make 90% of uh, you know, 100K or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that would be the first, like once you start getting clients and scaling, the first thing is outsource the, the Facebook ads. So get a media buyer. That's, in your opinion, the first person we should go ahead and hire. Yeah, so the closing would be the last thing I would outsource for most of you guys, unless like you you see you're you're really bad at closing and it's 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 be it's becoming like a major issue. But as a business owner, you should be able to sell, you know, somewhat. Like you have to have some sort of skill when it comes to doing that. Um, and then acquisition and fulfillment is your, your next sort of things to outsource. Okay, for me, the way I did it, I I outsourced uh, fulfillment. That was the first thing. And then I outsourced acquisition. Okay. And even today, closing, I'm still taking the calls. And uh, Praveen now is helping me with some of the calls as well. But uh, yeah, recently yeah. we started hiring people. But yeah, it's my son. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's son, you know. <laughs> I think I'm his big brother, and you're. Uh... <laughs> uh -huh. How's it going, Praveen? Good. Good. You guys. Oh, I'm in a fucking school. Bro. I actually got to. I got to. I actually got to drop out. Yeah, drop out. You want to go to the barber shop too? You're gonna to shave that palm Yo. head of yours. <laughs> Yo, shut up, bro. <laughs> he, he, he looks like that uh, anime catch a character from Big Mouth. <laughs> I don't watch anime. I mean, you should get a haircut too, bro. Your haircut's pretty bad as well. Uh, don't worry, bro. I'll donate you twenty. $20, it's cold. I haven't even combed my shit yet. I just got off a call. Chill out. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Charlie. Any other questions about your clients? Um, I think that was everything so far. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked your VSL and your landing page. Like you did it the way you did it was perfect. Like uh, oh yeah. If you want, like to help the others, if you can make a post and just share what you did. Um, I think more people should copy what you did. Like he, he, <clears throat> it was, there was somewhat of an edit to it. He showcased results, examples of work they would do. Uh, I think many of you, you guys, um, I know this call will be recorded and posted. So for those who are watching, uh, most of your VSLs that you guys send me is just you in front of the camera talking for 50 minutes or 15, whatever. Um, or you have some like generic PowerPoint where you're like, okay, first we're going to get you leads and then we're going to book the appointments and then we're going to call them and book them. And it's like, okay, it's cool. But like, and you, you guys need to focus a bit more also on the outcome. That's another mistake that I see most of you guys doing. You focus too much on the actual process versus focusing on what exactly is going to happen by them signing up with you and working with you. Um, and I think if you guys just focus on the outcome and completely ignored how you're going to get there, you would still get the same results even better results um so i think that's more important than presenting how you're going to run facebook ads and all those things for your clients cool perfect how about you bro dusan is that how you say now dasan yeah everything's good i don't have any questions i just came here to to, to listen more about yeah. it what are you doing right oh. now yeah, I finished uh, cold calling like 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple conversations. Nice. Uh, I have problem with uh, low pickup rate. Uh, and don't know what to do. Um, have problem also with a lot of get gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm in a legal niche, personal injury. Okay. So I'm guessing you're speaking to lots of receptionists and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's part of the game. Again, if anything that's like with receptionists, I right away would uh, switch towards um, doing cold DMs. Okay, If you really like cold calling, pick a niche where cold calling works. You know, that's why I picked plumbing when I started. Because when I called yeah. most of the time, and, I and, and what's good niche for cold calling? Because I, I think that's the best way. Um, instead of plumbing yeah anything that's home improvement home services like clinics and professional um, like services they're both probably the worst niches to cold call in doesn't mean you can't yeah, scale yeah. or can't make money and can't get clients it's just cold calling is not going to be as effective versus roofing flooring painting remodeling you know those types of niches got it got it got it 
And do you have guys uh, some good uh, power dialer instead of go high level? Um, would you use Cameron? Go call. What was his ask? Oh, for that power. I use I use Kixi. What? You can, How did you say? Kixi, K I X I E. You can call ten numbers at a time, and the ones that answer, they'll either leave it as a voicemail, you call back, or you can um. Uh, answer it and it'll be like on a whole list and they they uh, each person you call it. it'll like pick up the area code nice nice thank you hey, how, how much is it how much is it it's like uh, it varies right depends on usage but you get like a week free or 14 days free and you just have to buy the number so monthly i think it's like 200 300 ish a month just depends on how often you call. So if you're just doing a hundred dollars a day, then you know it'll probably be like one eighty, two hundred, something like that. Something like that. What if you yeah, no, I used I used to use um this this software called Mojo Dialer, and um it's just basically the same thing, but it'll call three lines at once and connect you to whichever one. And um it already has all the numbers and everything for you. What you do is you grab your phone and you just call the number, and then it'll connect you into their server. And um, it's the same thing. They don't have like 10, but I think three is more, farther, more than enough, especially when you're cold calling small businesses. You want to like kind of do your research right before. Um, so it gives you a little time. Yeah, I've, I've heard of the Mojo before. That's a familiar thing. I used to just yeah. cold call with my phone. I, I, I took my cell phone. I was like, <laughs> that's wow, how I started. Yeah, I was just, I took my phone and called. Like, I don't, I didn't use these fancy softwares and everything. So I'm learning. Yeah, I, was, so. I was broke when I started. I locked myself in a garage. <laughs> Damn, you up now, huh? Changing man. Yeah. Yeah. When bro, are you I buying me a Rolex, you know? <laughs> I got a VA and everything. <laughs> the rough, the Daytona is on the way. <laughs> good, 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 perfect. G wagons are my favorite cars, by the way. If ever you, you know, oh, yeah. buy me you know, I, I was looking at McLaren for myself, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I was like, you're there. <laughs> exactly. <huh? laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. How's it going, Milo? Yeah, all putting... good. Thank you. Good, good. I love putting people on the spot. You know, just calling them yeah. out. <laughs> How's everything yeah. on your end? Pardon? How's everything on your end? Yeah, we're well, pretty good. So me and my friend Sam, so basically we started while well, we were interested in SMA. And um, well, yeah, we've had a few calls with Kyle. So we're at the moment where well, we're still in school basically, so we can't really go full on with this. But but yeah, hopefully it's def it's definitely something we really want to like pursue and be successful because well, I'm just I just really don't want to be like doing nine to five jobs. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good. But I think bro. yeah, the probably the build bot the big the biggest bottleneck I think in our business is probably either getting appointments or when we get the appointments we close them. It's just in terms after that is onboarding them and get and basically getting all the details to launch the ads straight away basically. Mm -hmm. that's probably our biggest bottleneck because obviously uh, so if you've got any tips in terms of onboarding the clients stuff like that, that would be helpful yeah th those are all things you can look into you know prepare yourself in advance for the onboarding you know there's an onboarding form with most of the information that you need from the clients uh depending yeah. how you do it you know whether it be facebook or are you offering facebook yeah facebook ads and google ads too yeah. there's, there's a bunch of uh, videos and stuff like that like nerds breaking down how to uh integrate clients uh, facebook ads manager and stuff like that otherwise the easy route is you just hire someone who knows what they're doing and they do it for you yeah, yeah. we just spoke about okay. that for me i'm a big fan of just outsourcing and not yeah not dealing, not dealing with these small issues i've got another quick question then in terms because i my main method is facebook and insta dms and yeah. so basically, so I so I tell them our offer and everything. So and I don't tell them about the ad spend until we hop on the on the video call, because yeah. that's the only way they'll probably hop on a video call. So I hop on the video call anyway, and then I did your formula in um what you told me to do in terms of telling them the numbers, yeah, and the profit they do, and and sometimes I I still can't convince them to basically pay for the ads. They always want basically just for me to give them appointments and give them clients. 
So is mm-hmm. there like a way I can, an objection handling I can say on the call for them to be more inclined to spend money on ads? Yeah, it's, it's... yeah go ahead, Cameron. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. You, 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 you cut me off, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so just say like, yeah, man, so we don't really do anything like that over here. I mean, is there a reason why, like, what are you currently doing? So you can handle it in a lot of ways. Um, but those type of clients are not the ones you want because they're going to give you the most problems. So they want you to spend your money to get them jobs and they say they're going to pay you. So it's, this is not Angie's list. So we're not going to operate like that. So you're just okay. going to be like, so I mean, like, are you going, so like when you go out, give them like the example of their own business. Like, so when you go out, out, out and do the service, do you like wait till you get paid after service is done and get paid or you want everything up front, but you also have a guarantee behind it. So I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't don't force a sale out somebody. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my simple go to is I just tell them, I'm like, look, how can I take a hundred percent of the risk if I don't control 100% of the outcome? I don't close the deals for you. I don't oh, do yeah. the fulfillment, like, and all those things. It doesn't make sense for me to just be so invested into your company. If I could be in person and fix the roof myself, then I would do it. But um, otherwise, like, it's going to require some sort of investment from you, some sort of commitment. Um, and yeah, like, again, if you break down the numbers and you show them, like, look, for every X amount spent, we can make you about this much money. And if that doesn't happen, I'll refund you whatever you paid me. And it would, it's, it's all about framing it as like a kind of like a no-brainer offer. But yeah, yeah like Cameron okay. said, like, if you if you work with super cheap people small businesses they don't want to risk anything i don't want to take any risk and everything it's not the ideal client it's that's not who you want to work with but yeah. um, someone try to su- yeah. someone try to sue me for 500 dollars. <laughs> oh yeah 500 bucks ad spend no like 500 for management <laughs> and then the ad spend was only like 600 He's like, yeah, these leads are answering. So if someone comes in the forum, that means they want my business, right? I'm just like, no, now you have to sell yourself. <laughs> but it is what it is. So yeah. your, your, your contract saved me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. But yeah, it, it's all about um, what I learned over time. Like I was working with more and more people. It, it's all about setting expectations. If the expectations are set right at the beginning and you don't lie or you don't make fake promises, it's you will have no issues working with clients. Okay, because it's it's very easy to want to promise them the world just to get them to to pay you and start working together. And then once you actually get them results and they see that it's not what uh, you promised them, then that's when problems uh, start to come up. Okay, so. Yeah, just book as many calls as you can. It's 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 pure volume. This this is a volume game. Okay, this is yeah. it, this it's not your your job is not to convince everyone to 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 buy from you. It's to convince the people who are educated on ad spend. They understand they have to put some of their money to 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 make a an ROI. And your yeah. goal is to find those people and convince them that you're the right person to help them achieve their goals or whatever they're trying to achieve. I've got one last question in terms of upfront payment. So when I'm on the sales call, how how would you say is the best way to get them to pay and also how the best way to convince them that they have to pay something up front before we get to work well i mean it's 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 standard like you always pay for something when you start working with people so i think it's like it should be expected uh, but i kind of mentioned this earlier on the call uh, i think a good approach is to present two offers okay so you well, either okay. tell them like look either we do 100 percent performance based so you don't pay anything up front However, because I am taking on a bigger risk and I have to front the cost myself, I w- mm-hmm. I do require a higher fee for the closed deals. Typically, we take 15, 20%. And the guy's okay. going to be like, whoa, 20% is a lot. I typically make 20% margins. So you're like, well, that's the fee that we charge. Okay. So otherwise, if you don't want to go down that route, what I can do instead is just charge you 1000 per month as a flat fee, no performance. Uh, and if I don't make you money back, so if I don't make you more than a thousand bucks, I'll refund you that fee, and then we part ways from there. Okay. Okay. Right? So yeah. you kind of present them two offers. So you tell them like, "Hey, I can do nothing up front if you want. However, these are the conditions." Okay. And you right. make it. You make it so these conditions aren't like the pretty, the nicest things, you know. All right. Cheers. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Cool. Perfect. Any other questions?
Hey, how's it going, Oliver? Oh, how are you? Nice to meet oh, you. Man, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, I was just wondering if you had uh, a bit to review my landing page, if that was possible. Yeah, I understand. Do you mind if I send in the chat? Yeah, put it in the chat. Damn, I see you have the dot .io. <laughs> And at what stage are you at with the business right now? I'm uh, currently just trying to book calls through uh, Facebook cold DMs um, with setters, pretty much just building a setting team. Okay. With appointment setters? With appointment setters, yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, a little typo here. Agencies, yeah. And what news do you work with? I'm just working with agency owners at the moment. Okay. Uh, make it a bit more obvious that you work with agencies. It's not... Uh, a bit bigger? Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, some, uh, I would put something like attention agency owners, making more than 10 I mean, I'm using. I'm currently using Framer, so I thought about switching to Go High Level because I know all you guys like Surge, Oliver, you, um, yeah. you guys are all using Go High Level, but but I really um, like Framer though. Let's stick with Framer. Like Framer. I was gonna. I was okay. gonna make the switch to to to, to Framer. Yeah, uh, okay. I think Go High Level is a bit. Uh, it's a bit ghetto. It, uh, it yeah. doesn't work at the beginning, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I never <laughs> like the funnel style of it. So. Yeah, exactly. What do you mean ghetto? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look. It doesn't look pretty, you know. Okay, then you need to get the uh the fucking sash and you could change the color around, Mr. Picky. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the actual website. Oh yeah, it's fine. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> it's ghetto. I thought you were gonna say it looks it's too much shit on there or something. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I like it. It's nice. I think including some of the results, like expected outcome, I think that would be good. Yeah. Because again, like it's it's easy for me to tell you, I'll do your appointments, I'll do this, I'll do that. But what exactly is that going to look like? Um, I I'll, I'll watch you. Can you send me the link in um by DMs in private? Yeah. And I'll, I I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll look at it and everything. But yeah, I, I like it. It's good. How exactly Thank do you go about doing this? Like, how does this work? You're just hiring a setting team and a, a cold, cold email campaigns for your clients, and then getting a closer from for for uh, the client. Okay, how much are you charging? I'm currently charging fifteen hundred, but I, I know a couple of people that I've spoken to. They're all telling me with this sort of service, you can charge like upwards of like thirty five, forty five hundred. Yeah, you can charge way more. Yeah. Um And um, okay, cool, perfect. This is a good offer. Five to fifteen clients. It's just can you actually deliver on that? That's the only thing, you know. But yeah, very good, very good. That's what we do most of the time. So you're going after like my my a similar target to what I do, and we. Um, I can show you our numbers if you want. And do you recommend that I dabble into paid ads right away, or do you do you say that I kind of stay on cold DMs and cold email and just focus on that for now? What would you recommend? Um. For if you're going after agency owners, cold DMs yeah. works. It works extremely well. Paid ads okay. is the ultimate thing. It is the best yeah. thing. However, you need to have like a proper budget. Like how much would you put into ad spend? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Like how much would I need to actually put into C? You know, like when we reasons. when we work with our clients, we put um we tell them to put at least a hundred bucks per day in ad spend. Okay. Yeah. Like in order for us to like, I've I've I know people who have gone in really good results with a lot less. It's just I cannot make that promise to someone and tell someone, yeah, yeah. with five hundred bucks per month you can make millions on the ad spend. Okay, so yeah. like for me on contract, like for me to to meet the conditional guarantee, they have to put at least a hundred bucks. Okay, I know people who have done it with less, but uh, to be honest, bro, one thing that's very the reason why I'm able to really sell my services easily is because I sell what I actually do. 
So all of most of my meetings yeah. are booked through appointment setting or like cold DMs and setters. And that's what you're just redoing that exact same process. Exactly. So it, okay. it, I always, I always tell people, I'm like, look, how, how did we get in contact today? They're like, well, someone reached out to me. Same like, thing. exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I'm going to be building for your business. They're like, oh, and they see it works because they, they kind of fell for it. I'm not fell for it, but you know what I mean? Um, I've shown this in a couple of uh, videos. I do recommend getting like this. It's called Teddy e something. It's like a hundred bucks per month. It's not that expensive. Um, and basically you can track all of the performance from your setters. And when I show this dash dashboard to my clients, it's very easy to convince them to work with us. I don't know why it's not loading, but um, as you can see, we booked, sent a total of 20,000 DMs. How are you able to track DMs though? Um, so that's it. We use the software. So there's um, basically, this is connected to an Excel sheet. And oh, my, and the setter puts it in the Excel sheet and then that's how exactly. you it. It's connected to a Google form. So it's a bit cleaner. And basically people can... Um, Yeah, it's connected to a form and basically the setters at the end of the day will fill out the form. I sent X amount of DMs. Uh, I yeah, like the end of the day form. Using, yeah, that makes and sense. Everything yeah. is being uh, sent to that place. Thank you. Make sense? Yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. Thank you. If, if I were you, bro, I would stick with DMs. Uh, go all in on that. Um, you have a good offer, so it's going to be very easy to book people. Uh, from experience, uh, I would stay away from people who are just starting out. They're not the, the 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 right type of people to work with for this type of offer. I see that a lot on Facebook, though. A lot of yeah. beginners. A lot of just exactly. So, how so, would you prospect in that case? Like, how do how do you? Well, you're asking for my sauce. You know, we're going after the same people. <laughs> so yeah, I'm giving away my yeah. secrets. Uh, but it's all about qualifying the people, right? So it's just okay. the volume. So you DM the people, mm -hmm. and you see where are they at with the business. Uh, yeah. For me. Uh, for me, I basically have two funnels, you know, like I have one for people who are starting out and then one for people who are more advanced. So I, no matter who I text, I still have an outcome. I have something that's built, uh, yeah. but it's, it's all about qualifying in the DMs, you know, um, or in the calls and stuff like that. Um, yeah. For us, what we do now is we're, um, we're going to integrate a two call process. So basically I have a triage caller. So before the actual sales call, the lead is going to have a call with someone. And they're just going to ask them a bunch of questions, see if they qualify to work with us. And if they yeah, do I was qualify, thinking about that because that way it builds more trust, and you can send them like YouTube videos and like kind of nurture them until that final exactly, call. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And especially for you, if you're going after like agency owners, like anything that's online, like coaches, consultants, uh, stuff like that, having a personal brand is like a must. That's a must. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you need to have something online just to show that you're you're someone because there is lots of competition in our space, lots of people doing what we're doing. Um, and uh, I'm telling you, most of my sales come because the fact that they're like, yeah, I watch your content. I really like the way you explain things. I like who you are as a person. I want to work with you guys. Uh, even though sometimes we're a lot more expensive than our competitors, they still rather work with me just because it's me. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you, you got to get on that as well. Cool. Perfect, bro. Cool, cool, cool. Any other questions? Comments? How beautiful I look, how my haircut is fresh, you know? I cut my hair just for you guys, and I didn't even get a single compliment. Like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> okay. kind of funny, so. <laughs> okay, perfect, boys um, and girls. Uh, well, um, I'll, uh, I'll end the call a bit earlier. Um, it was nice to speak with everyone. As usual, if ever you have any questions, anything you want me to look at specifically, you can always just send me a DM. Okay, I know I'm not the most responsive. I will uh, sometimes take like a day or two to answer, but I'll always answer your, your questions, your messages. Uh, so just send me over everything uh, and I'll take a look at it, especially your VSLs and your landing page. That's extremely important, okay? Because for most of you guys, that's your main funnel. And if someone's interested, especially on a cold call, what's the next thing they do? They always say, send me an email with more information. So what do you send? You send a landing page. And that's the first impression that they have of your business. And if you don't have that nailed, then it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be a fun process for you guys. Yeah. So just make sure that is really optimized. It's well made. So just send it to me. I'll review it for you guys or send it to Kyle. He's going to do it uh, as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise, best of luck with everything. It was nice to meet the new faces over here. Let's crush it. 
um, and we'll see each other next week uh, at the same time. I might do it Saturday. Okay, I'll make a poll and I'm going to see if maybe Saturday is better for you, uh, most of the people because I know most of you guys are at school or working and stuff like that. So uh, doing it Friday in the middle of the day is not always uh, the most convenient time for you guys. Okay. All right, perfect, everyone. Best of luck with everything. I'll talk soon. Peace.